Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, hey, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Vancouver, British Columbia for OpenStack Summit, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We're in day three, this is Silicon Angles. The Cube, our flagship program, we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angles. Join my co-host, Stu Miniman, Chief Analyst for Cloud and Infrastructure at Wikibon.com. Our next guest is Cube alum, Lou Tucker, VP, CTO at Cisco, great to see you. Great and to Mark back. McLaughlin, OpenStack Technical Director from Red Hat. Great welcome to, to the Cube for the first Cheers. time. Thank you. Welcome guys. Sure. So we got some legends on theCUBE. We got Lou, we got Mark, you guys are legends in the tech community. Mm -hmm. So great to have you on, share your insights. First, first question I got to ask, you know, I mean, it's an oh shit moment here for OpenStack, Lou. You mentioned mm -hmm. that was your soundbite from, mm -hmm. uh, from your speech mm -hmm. this morning. People, the cloud is here. People who didn't make the bet need to are running fast to make the bet. OpenStack has legs, it's crossed over mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. path to maturity, not just POCs anymore. What's your take on it? Do you agree and give some insights on where OpenStack is right now and, and what's going on with customers, people yeah, shipping? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I think the, the oh shit moment's happening for the people who, who are just waking up now. And they're competing against companies who had the aha moment like two years ago that they were really going to get on board with this. And so now there's a real catch up that a lot of companies are, are having to do. And I saw that, that came actually out of looking at a National Association of Broadcasters, NAB conference, where it's all hardware appliances, all moving to virtualized now systems now. And the companies that started that two years ago have a tremendous advantage and tremendous head start. And that's important from a competitive advantage standpoint because in this cloud era, the lock-in doesn't exist anymore for, co for competitive advantage. The new lock-in is speed. So there's economies of scale with that advantage. So I'll use that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you, that's that what you're basically saying. Yeah. Do you agree? So, yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so Lou, you know, there's some in, in kind of the, the journalistic world that mm -hmm. have said that you know, well, VCs are fleeing away. There's some in the mm -hmm. analyst world that have said that OpenStack's a science project. Mm -hmm. What are they missing? Um, they're missing the fact that the customers have been looking for something like OpenStack for a long time. Something that is not produced by a single vendor. It doesn't have that kind of lock-in, something that is the rest of the IT community is working together on. So that's where you see both Red Hat and Cisco working with IBM, with HP and others to bring this out. So it's not the typical thing that, that analysts think of when they think of one, one faction against another or something. Here we're working together, so yeah. that's different. That's they're old school, they're having a hard time That's old school, that. the factions working against each yeah. other. Now that's different, now what's changed? Why, why is it not the factions against each other? Is it more maturization of open source protocols? And I mean, protocols mean like yeah. etiquette or? Well, you've been at this a long what, what, time. What's yeah. your you know, take I, on I that? I mean, I think you're absolutely right. What we're seeing here is the convergence of people really de de demanding that competitive advantage of agility and that ability to kind of disrupt themselves before they get disrupted by others. And then this kind of combination of, we've created this amazing community that's building you know what people want what people need to get to get that and um, competitive advantage i mean i've been around open source for a long time um there's you don't see many communities like the the openstack community really the only one with the amount of kind of diversity and the amount of stuff going on um similar to openstack is the linux community yeah. but i think what's happened here is we've managed to draw the kind of um you know the corporate world closer to the the, the actual development happening in the project and a lot more real true kind of collaboration mm -hmm. between companies mm -hmm. and cooperation between companies happening in this project and it's really, really something special. Yeah, so, so Mark, this is the third year we've done theCUBE at the event. Last mm -hmm. year, we had a lot of debates with people, you know, is there enough leadership? Mm -hmm. Do we need mm -hmm. a fanatical dictator because, you know, that's what you really need in open source and everything like that. There's been a lot of changes mm -hmm. in the board, the governance yep. model, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we talk about the big tent and, mm -hmm. you know, powered by OpenStack have been really one of the main talks that we, we've had this week. You know, from your viewpoint, you know, in open source, you know, where are we? You know, what's the big move that happened over the last year? And, you know, are, are we in good shape for going forward? Yeah, I actually gave a talk on this yesterday. It was um, titled like OpenStack Governance, Bridges and Hierarchies. <laughs> and what I was really talking about was how healthy OpenStack communities, well, like healthy even 21st century social organizations are kind of um, bottom up, non-hierarchical organizations and leadership is through em empathy and empowerment and trust and all this kind of thing. And it's, it's really, I'd like to kind of set some principles for how we want to get to as a community because I think a lot of people within this community, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of developers contributing here who've never really ex experienced this kind of community before, who aren't kind of really aware of th this kind of abstract 
concept of a non-hierarchical organization we're trying to get to. And I, I think we do need some more leadership within the OpenStack community that, that's really aware of, of what we're in. Some will say here. that's more kumbaya and that, that doesn't scale, although it, mm -hmm. does, it is healthy dynamic to have that non-hierarchical. Well, in fact, I think it's the only way you yeah, can scale. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you I, do. I, think, yeah, I mean, hierarchies scale by growing the base. You know, you get larger and larger and you still got one person or two people at yep. the top or whatever. That doesn't scale in terms of attacking new markets or going after new kinds of opportunities that we see going on in OpenStack today. Yep. Yeah, and the other thing too I want to point out is also the, the growth in the market is pretty significant. So there's plenty of beachheads. So growth hides a lot of the, the, the backbiting and the fighting mm -hmm. because there's mm -hmm. so much beachhead. There's you know, fruit on mm -hmm. all the trees, if you will, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. for, for everyone to play. So there's a lot of room. Right. Um, but in terms of scaling their developer community, the, the, the analogy I use is back in the day, like 2004, 2005, when Linus was really struggling to keep up with what was, what was going on, and they created distributed version control, they created this yeah. kind of bottom-up um, model, and I think with some of the scaling challenges we're seeing in the OpenStack community, we're going to see a similar kind of turning point. Where It's we, interesting, we you know, we, you know, we're yeah. a student of all the you know, open source, we've given our, our industry experience, you guys as well. Mm -hmm. Linux had something that was going on for it around it, which was they had men, you had hardware manufacturers, you had the client-server yep. guys, you had yep. the proprietary <laughs> Unix guys who were like, let's kill that. So mm -hmm. that was the, the mm -hmm. here you don't have that, you have a lot of open, mm -hmm. uh, scale out, open mm -hmm. commodity, mm -hmm. so there's no real proprietary target, it's kind of a elusive mm -hmm. to say, you know, that's the bad guy. Uh, we mentioned lock-in. Yep. How does that change our world? I mean, that makes it a little bit more frictionless in, in the way of scaling up. I think it comes down to what, you know, at, at the end of the day, what a company has to deliver to a customer is some value proposition. And so what we're saying, the value proposition shouldn't be in how your, co your code is different than another person's code when the customers are actually trying to do the same thing. Instead, it has to be all of the other associated values around that, that they are supporting it, yeah. that they are investing in the architecture, that they're making investment in the community itself, taking the feedback from customers, putting that yeah. back through the process. So that I think in OpenStack, we've tried to create a model that allows all those companies to be successful even though what we're, we're not trying to differentiate on is actually the yeah. code itself. It's in all of the, everything else around the code. I was talking to Stu before we came, you guys came on about, there's, a, there's probably going to be a Harvard case study on OpenStack because you know, it has nine lives, right? Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's always had these moments mm -hmm. of speed bumps where you know, something could have happened, it could have mm -hmm. been a marketing program, mm -hmm. then there, vote with your code. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. evolution over the years has been really fantastic to watch the adaptability of the core community, the, the passionate, I call founders, mm -hmm. of, not yeah. the real founders, but you know what I'm saying, the early kernel of people. So I got to ask you guys your perspective on what's going on today that I think is super successful in OpenStack is that you got the passion and learning and you got people sitting on floors in the technical sessions and then you got the big whales coming in. You got Oracle, Cisco, mm -hmm. IBM, mm -hmm. HP, mm -hmm. EMC. And so the big guys are coming in, but they can't dominate. But oh, they have to sure. ingratiate in. So it's a nice balance between that we're the Growth. European Union. Yeah. No, yeah, we, so, we, so we, comment we, on that. We, why we, is that? Why we, is that we, successful? No, we, why we, is it we successful? We created an amazing community culture that's actually really, really hard to establish when you've got lot, lots of companies involved. Everybody in the OpenStack community, all the developers involved, they leave aside their affiliations and they're really representing the interests of their communities. And like at Red Hat, we, you know, we struggle really, or not struggle, we actually push that really hard with our developers, really men mentor them, teach them how to do that. And I think that's where we've created this environment where people can collaborate, like, a, and yeah. get stuff done without so actually. I'll call that developer first. Like environment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's not company yeah. first, it's and developer one of, first. One of the benefits, though, the OpenStack has brought this methodology about how you develop code in the open yep. to many, many more developers oh, than, than probably any other project I know of today. I know within Cisco, I'm constantly bringing traditional Cisco engineers who have never worked in this kind of environment yep. into OpenStack, and they love it. I mean, first of all, what they, because developers, Quite frankly, they develop code because they want other people to use it. They want to be recognized for that. And that's what happens in an open you know, environment like this. They get recognition, not just from their own Cisco employees, but from people they've never met before, from com people that are in competitors, and they get to learn and be recognized for it at the same time. Yeah, so what, one of the things that uh, you know, really caught my attention this week is some of the new things that people are doing that they couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when OpenStack started, it was like, oh, is it the AWS killer? Oh, does it help people get off VMware? Um, but you know, talk about things like NFV, talk about new applications, mm -hmm. new business mm -hmm. models, talk in the keynote. Mm -hmm. what, what are you seeing? What's, what's kind of the real proof points um, that this is going to help drive I IT think, forward in the industry. You know, it, we alluded to it or sort of earlier looking at like the, the media landscape, moving from hardened appliances now to virtualized systems. Each new indu each industry is now going through that. So NFV is a prime example of that, that many of the traditional network service providers or whatever are really struggling. Their costs are, you know, 
people are willing to pay less and less for those kinds of services and their costs are remaining the same. So they are turning to virtualization. And when they turn to virtualization as a concept, they're going, where's the platform for that? And so that's when they are saying OpenStack is a platform. So we have OpenNFV, which is taking multiple open source projects and bringing them together into a solution that the carriers can use. And what's really interesting for me around NFV is just how we've gone over the past year from people not understanding what NFV is, um, how you know it was all about agility for telcos, being able to, to move faster in terms of the application they're deploying, and how it had any kind of relationship with OpenStack, right? So people, um, in, at first, when they saw this use case, were kind of like, that's not Elastic Cloud, OpenStack right, can never right. do that. But we've worked through the issues, and we've, we've, we've kind of seen how it's, it's, whether it's IPv6, or whether it's kind of new awareness on compute nodes or whether it's you know um, kind of better networking or more you know flexible networking support yeah. or whatever all of those um, particular uh, you know advancements all make sense in a, in a broader context than just NFE so you know it's a community of diverse interests and people kind of able to where's the hot spots guys where's the action at and the hot action and also the action where you need to improve faster for instance so you wrote up service provider mm -hmm. NFE mm -hmm. a lot of pressure on you know mm -hmm. certainly neutron and other areas within the mm -hmm. in the service provider but there's a huge different diverse use case, I mean, service providers have different needs than say an enterprise, yep, yep. you know, the scales there. So what's, well, how, what, is, what, what's in, in finding the common needs? Everybody has a need for yep. a platform that works, that, that can ha be highly resilient, that can be Automatable, you know, easy to manage, and, you know, yeah. lower yeah. cost to operation, operate and everything else. So those are common across yeah. almost all so the So that's a cases. foundational. So the foundational pieces are still a, a big emphasis of where we have to go. Um, but then I think we are seeing this kind of verticalization in NFV, we're seeing it in video, we're seeing now containers. And so here, here's a classic case, we've got, do, are those competing technologies, cloud computing mm -hmm. versus the container model, whatever? In a or monolithic, do, do you say really yes, but in a distributed world, the needs of the customer ultimately will trump, and, right? And in fact, in the single organization, you probably have needs for both. Yeah. yeah. And so this is where OpenStack is an open community, so we can actually embrace these multiple different Well, I got to ask you on that, that point, because you're, you're highlighting an area thing we were talking about earlier, is that this theme that we're seeing from our report, looking at all the, the data points and the beautiful views here in Vancouver, is a real emphasis of architecture, this, this show. So you, it, it's not, there's not a lot of hype. Last year was uh, at Atlanta, oh, containers, and they weren't mm -hmm. even, Docker wasn't mm -hmm. even around mm -hmm. then, but, but they were kind of driving in, so it kind of hijacked the conversation space. Here, the conversation in the hallways is really architectural. The architects are here, so to your point, you have a foundational okay set of platform, uh, but this undefined top of the solution stack, if you will, for lack of a better yeah. description, is developing. So, yes, architectures, ar ar architects are here, but I got to ask you, what language do the customers speak? Because one of the things we're saying is that they don't say I want a platform as a service, they don't say I want infrastructure as a service, they want services. Yeah. So, yep. Yep. what yep. is the language of the customer, and how are you guys balancing in the open stack, how to be at least compatible there. Well, I think you're right in that things have evolved over the last year, especially in the in, the, in terms of how we talk about containers. I think and how people coming to this event are talking about containers. A year ago, it was the new thing. People hadn't necessarily dug into it too much. They now understand it. They understand the challenges about managing the, the infrastructure under it. Yeah. Um, and so they are now talking about the applications that they have and the mixture of, you know, they'll be able to run some, some services in containers and some, some um, more traditional uh, applications will run on VMs and how to connect them to all together and how the storage and networking integration will, will all work. Um, it's getting down to real kind of practical how we're going to bring these two, um, two modes together mm -hmm. and how we're going to mm -hmm. integrate them together mm -hmm. uh, for specific workloads. It's all about the workloads, right? Yeah. So we got a question from on the crowd chat here. So mm -hmm. crowdchat.net slash OpenStacks, our engagement container. Are we calling it kind of a joke on Docker, but it's a whole other <laughs> discussion. So David Deans, he's read with Red Hat's Walmart's keynote and others, the first days talk less about infrastructure, more about business outcomes. Yep which has kind of become cliche, but it does mean something. This is a unique turning point where CEOs find some meaning here. I guess what he's teasing out is business outcome is Absolutely. what people want, Absolutely. and that is in the eye of the beholder, which is the customer. So OpenStack is a resource set of technologies. It, it's an enabler for those outcomes, and that's where we're seeing even um, Bank of America, you know, always saying they want a software-defined infrastructure, and they define that, you know, a couple of things that are matter to them. Agility, speed of new deployments, they need to roll out new services to their to their branch offices or something, a pop-up store that they may want to do banking or whatever in a matter of months. And so they are moving to cloud to get that kind of agility. Agility is, a, is an outcome that a business that can move faster can ward off the disruptors of their business. They want it lower cost, so they need it fully automated. 
we had Fayez on him from Cisco earlier. Mm -hmm. He's going back, oh, in 1992 when I joined Cisco, and I'm like, <laughs> so we're kind of having a historical kind of throwback, <laughs> okay. uh, throwback Wednesday, or whatever you want to call it. I said, so I said, okay, Cisco made a lot of money with TCP IP mm -hmm. as a disruptive mm -hmm. enabler, and that mm -hmm. created internetworking, yep. and you know, the buzzword now is intercloud or interclouding, I'm calling it. Um, but that was an enabler, mm -hmm. very disruptive, and what happened on top of that was a lot of wealth creation, great outcomes for customers. Mm -hmm. Cisco mm -hmm. became a huge mm -hmm. company. What is that today? You mentioned, ad is it agile, is it cloud? What is the disruptive enabler? Similar in analog, that's not directly, but you know, what TCPI did was enabled in industry, right? OpenStack in the same vein is enabling an mm -hmm. industry transformation, mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. customer outcomes. Mm -hmm. You got vendors, you got developers. Mm -hmm. So okay. what's your vision on that, guys? Can you share, what is that, what is the enabler? Is it just being agile? Is it just being faster? Yeah. Is that the new differentiation? All these things kind of you know, dovetail off that. So for me, just preparing for my talk yesterday, I've, I'm going back over the Agile Manifesto, and for me, that's kind of <laughs> where this all starts, right? So Agile was all about software development and kind of you know um, smaller teams and more engaged with business value, but it, it's moved on now to DevOps and how to continue or how to deliver continuous value to customers, and it's about those business outcomes and it's about how to operate your applications and in order to do that you need this automatable infrastructure under, under that um, so to me it's all this kind of continuum of um, what came from the Agile Manifesto and what's led there in terms of DevOps and so it's all about new ways of developing software new ways of bringing software to the market and I think that's what's driving it's the freedom it's unshackling innovation <coughs> yep, right yep, so that's yep. essentially enabling right and it's getting out of the way of developers what we've always seen in the past that IT often has been an inhibitor towards application development, that you have to trial a exactly, trouble yeah. ticket to get you know, a server deployed yeah. or the, get yeah. that port opened or something like that. More and more we are automating these systems and they're becoming self-service. Self-service I think is still the and strongest. And programmable yeah. too. Com and so it has to be programmable yeah. because it's not just through a, a GUI or something, you need to be able to have other systems. Once you make it programmable, systems start getting tied together. So one system can start to drive the other yeah. and you can take through automation, the cost of delivering that. Th That's the lever right there. Mm. So I think it used to be about cost, now it's about speed. I think speed trumps cost every time. If you, if your competitor is out there with a competing offer faster than you are, that's serious. Talk about the history of open source. Obviously, you know, the, going back to the early days, you know, the shoulders of giants is this or whatever it says, but right now we're in an interesting modernization of open source. It's tier one, it's first class citizen, you know, certainly Red Hat mm -hmm. made their bones by coming mm -hmm. in as an alternative. Mm -hmm. Now they're running 10 year SLAs, at OpenStack for three years. Mm -hmm. Cisco's now mm -hmm. in the mix with OpenStack. Mm -hmm. What is the open source model for today? It's really interesting and cool right now where you have big companies like EMC transforming their entire operation to be open source. I mean, that's for Stu, like yep, they, they, yep, they yep. never would have done that. 10 years ago. Yep. So there's a business model now for corporate America, and you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. the factions, I remember mm -hmm. the IT, mm -hmm. IETF and IEEE, mm -hmm. these W3C, all these different the, committees yeah. would be fighting. I think it's the way customers are now demanding that their vendors behave. They are saying, I no longer want you fighting it all out. Will you guys just get together? We used to do it through standards bodies. Yeah. Get together and figure out the standard because, and then we'll buy your wares. Now they're saying we need the implementations of that. So get together, so it's community driven software that uh, I think we're using open source as a vehicle to achieve that goal. Yeah. Yep. It goes beyond community, it's actually in execution in the open. It is. That's oh, absolutely, and right. it's, it's about people realizing what you can achieve through collaboration, but the really interesting thing is, you know, it's actually really hard to achieve that kind of community that is really collaborative. It's very easy to put your, push your code out there on yep. GitHub. It's very easy to create a foundation around your project. It's very easy to you know, put yourself out there, but actually to engage people and build that collaborative environment. Well, well also we, has done but that. also now customers can actually look at the leaderboard, so to speak, and look at Git, look at what's been closed. Mm -hmm. Oh, that house mm -hmm. has been on the market for two, two, tw two months. Oh, it must not be good. Yep. With code, <laughs> it's like, oh, that's an open, open item, open issue, hasn't been closed. It's a shit community. It's got mm -hmm. nothing going on, I'm not buying that. Mm -hmm. So customers mm -hmm. can actually mm -hmm. now yeah. audit mm -hmm. Exactly progress. right, exactly right. So that transparency that's always been associated with open yeah. source, I think, is, yeah. is one of the other things. Yeah, so you know, one of the big <laughs> challenges, it's great when everybody's contributing and everybody's trying to figure out where it's go, when the money starts coming in. Mm -hmm. How do we keep that going? You know, we, we've had lots of debates as to you know, how many, you know, how many successful billion dollar open source companies are. Well, Mark, you're working for the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so uh, <laughs> when we asked Jim Whitehurst last year, why aren't there more? He said, because you know, selling free is really tough. Yeah, it's really um, hard. Yeah. I, so I talked about that in my 
mm-hmm. keynote yesterday yeah. it's like why do, if the software is free why do people pay Red Hat and yeah. you know the answer I used yesterday was expertise and technical support but it's, it, it's a much broader answer than that but just in the context of OpenStack I think what we've done that's really interesting is we have brought the money closer to the community but we've centered the money around an OpenStack mm-hmm. foundation with a mission to protect empower and pr- pr- promote the project and not to control the project yeah, right? We, right, we've, right we're really trying to empower the project as opposed to, to kind and of those are the, the principles that we live in. that's why it, it is the model that we have around how do we how we form these these projects and everything else. But back to your, your question in terms of the commercialization, there's still an evolution here. We are now, I think the next couple of years, what we are all looking for is the whole rest of the ecosystem to get developed out. And they are building then their own solutions on top of OpenStack because they have OpenStack and makes it lower cost for them to develop those solutions and to move even faster. And then they will start to compete with each other. Yes, I mean, Lou, it just can talk a little bit about inside the company. I mean, I, I know you're such a mm-hmm. huge proponent of mm-hmm. open source mm-hmm. and what's going on. Talk about how that shift happens and pushes through, because you know the margins, the sales force, the you know <laughs> the, the rate of change is just very different than what yep. the you yep. know traditional Cisco hierarchy is designed yeah. for. Well, Cisco more and more. As I mean, you've heard you know John Chambers and everything talking about it. We are becoming an IT company, which means that we really are selling solutions the IT, the business outcomes. That's what customers are going to Absolutely. get from Cisco. Yep. And so open source is, is an accelerant for that because now we don't have to develop everything. We actually can partner with all of the other companies to develop this software and therefore go to market faster with our solutions. Also security, some people are also argue that it's more secure in the open because more eyes are on it versus having some you know, proprietary piece of yep. software. Except for a little bit of open SSL that was out there. <laughs> Nobody, yeah, so it, actually, I was talking to uh, Charlie uh, Giancarlo the other day actually uh, on debate on open source and proprietary. And what we're saying is, it's actually, you know, being open is not enough, it's how many inspectors you have. So the reason why we that bug persisted so long is that we didn't have enough people looking at it. So you can have it open, but then you have to have people looking at it as well. Yeah. And that's something that we always urge everybody in OpenStack to be doing that. Reviews count, very or a very important part of that. We need more eyes looking at this. Yep. Otherwise, the security issues could remain there forever. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, another real challenge out there is, you know, when people install something, they mm-hmm. tend not to change it. A t- typical Cisco catalyst. You know, uh-huh. you put the code in, you don't change it. Uh, even on OpenStack, one of the mm-hmm. things that we need to bridge is how do I upgrade from one version to the other non-disruptively? Absolutely. We Absolutely. need to do that. Um, do you think we can get to a model where it's, you know, more online? It's upgraded. You know, if I go use Amazon or I'm using Office 365, Absolutely. I don't think about my versioning. Absolutely. So I, I, I think we're making huge, huge advances there, and I think. It's it's all about creating kind of an infrastructure for, for deploying and managing OpenStack that's automatable so that you can automate the upgrades. Um, one of the big challenges for handling upgrades for a vendor like Red Hat is like our, our customers can deploy OpenStack in hundreds of different c- configurations and in order to support the upgrades of all of those, it's, it's quite challenging. So I think we'll be taking an approach of you know, really identifying key use cases and automating the, the upgrades of those. Um, but it's a, it's a big challenge for OpenStack. Because we're getting close yeah. on time, I want to get one question and I know Stu might have another one, but I want to get your perspective as, uh, as leaders. Uh, Lou, mm-hmm. certainly mm-hmm. your reputation, mm-hmm. you've been mm-hmm. in a lot of experience. Um, Mark, I'm going to mm-hmm. get your take on as well. As a, for the technical leads out, you mentioned scale. This thing's going to mm-hmm. grow like, mm-hmm. like, a, like a weed. I mean, mm-hmm. OpenStack is it's, it's horizontally scaling yep. across industries and obviously scaling up in terms of agile functionality. Being a technical lead for the folks that are coming in, what is your advice and what's your vision and etiquette or you know, what's the protocols, if you will, to be a great lead? to mm-hmm. be great technically. Mm-hmm. Is it just herding cats? Is it publishing? Is it doing stuff? What's the norms that are forming in the OpenStack community that you could share with folks that might be watching and saying, hey, you know, you could be a participant and if you want to be a technical lead or take a project and drive it mm-hmm. home, what are the mm-hmm. great use cases, success factors mm-hmm. you've seen? Yeah. And share your insight and experience. Well, the advice I give to people is, number one, find your niche. Find find some way that you're passionate about that you can find a way to, to contribute and start from there. Um, really empower yourself to actually, you know, you see a way forward, you can get it done and then start empowering other people. Start setting an example for other people and, and start showing them um, how to kind of achieve what you've achieved. Is that through code yeah. or yeah. through? Oh, it's getting yeah. stuff done. Yeah. That, that's the yeah. only currency here. It's, so it's, so it's we run the, as a meritocracy. <coughs> so developers develop, you know, elect their leaders. So that the leaders who are going to be elected are going to be those people that the developers felt most comfortable with leading them. 
And so this is, this is what we're hoping to accomplish here. So I would suggest, you know, it really starts from what are you doing with some, for somebody else before you're trying to drive your own agenda. Yeah. It takes that kind of it's selfless. It's a social it's equation. A leader is always selfless. It's mm. always for the yeah. team's success, not their own. It's a social equation. I mean, it's yeah. just common sense in a way, right? Yeah. Like, you know, be a cool person, can help people. That's right. Contribute that's right. code, and then, post then something then on the board. Exactly right. Yeah. That's, how it, that's how it comes back. And I think that, therefore, the I've always stressed with, with um, my folks that we start to introduce people in OpenTech, start with reviews. Start doing something for somebody else, pushing other people's code oh, through the system. Then, guess what? You have an yeah. instant audience. When, you're, when you, we now yeah. want to go forward with something, it'll be... This creates currency and self-governance currency yeah. as it, well, yep. and yep. that flywheel just... Is it, a, is it builds relationships, and all of this is about relationships, yeah. and it's all yeah. about the interactions between individuals, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and, and the fruit that comes off the tree, everyone shares, yep. right? Yep. So that is the fruits and of the fact, labor. The that's the way we operate on the board itself. I mean, when we come in, to, and there's a lot of decisions that we have to make, and, and yeah. it's a rather large yeah. board and everything else. And we are there to support each other because we have the, the, a shared goal and a shared mission that we're after. And it's a lot less about our individual company's agendas, which yeah, I think absolutely. a lot of time people view it that way. There's mm -hmm. old vendors involved in this. No, we are there because we actually have the experience and we are there to drive the, the community forward. So Cisco Open was a hashtag I saw, or Open Cisco, or Cisco Open was a mm -hmm. hashtag I saw mm -hmm. trending on our, on our CrowdChat dashboard. So what does that mean? Is, is Cisco Open, and is that internally the momentum, and are you, are you <laughs> winning? Are you winning that, uh, that, that fight? Is it well received? What, share some insight. Yes, I, th I think it's trying to get across there. There is a new Cisco in terms of how we're looking at software, and that, that open source is a key part of our strategy going forward, so we wanted to say it with having such a hashtag. Yeah, great, we love that hashtag. Yeah, so the, the last question I have, since you're both on the board, is you know, love what, the, kind of the, the, the big tent and mm -hmm. you know, really mm -hmm. the certification, but there's a balance between how do we get it working and how do we keep innovating? And I, I heard from a few people that said, you know, hey, devs want to work on stuff that's important, and if it's not core, you know, are they going to still be incented to do that? So how do we keep innovating you know, and, and stabilizing? Those are usually you know, pulling in two different directions. Yeah, I, I, I think there's, you know, it's a community of diverse interests. So some people are going to be really passionate, really um, you know, focused on, on improving the core and, and really tackling those kind of real critical use cases to OpenStack. But there's always going to be people who want to experiment with different, different models and there's new projects cropping up the whole time. Um, I think we're managing to to balance, to kind of thread that needle and balance between the two really well in OpenStack. There's no shortage of people who want to, to work on the core projects mm -hmm. and no shortage of people who want to work on Guys, on great, innovations. great yep. to have your yep. insights on theCUBE. Appreciate it, uh, we're, we're, we're stuck for time now. But I'll give you guys the final word. For the folks aren't, who aren't here, obviously Vancouver, mm -hmm. beautiful city, mm -hmm. clear skies, no rains, beautiful weather. What's happening here at this show? What's the vibe? Share some color around what's going on at the physical event, your perspectives, the hallway conversations, what's the vibe, folks not here, give them a, give yeah, them a taste. Did. As you can see, it's tremendously exciting. I, in many ways, keep, keep expecting things to sort of start to level off a bit. Yeah. If anything, though, the excitement and the participation is just continuing to grow. Yeah, it's, and it's scaling out as well. It's, it's, a, it's, it's more excitement in more and more rooms. Of yeah. Yep, yep, so they're many all, topics over, you they're can't, all overflowing. You can't we can never seem to, <laughs> yeah. you know, we try to, figure out how many people in each of these sessions, and each of the sessions have been totally packed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. people so on the floor, I mean, it's ridiculously on, amazing. Look at, yeah. we, all the videos are up, they're up within hours after they're being presented here, so even if you can't make it here, you can participate. And that's what I'll be doing when I go back to San Francisco. Well, I was <laughs> even doing it myself <laughs> last night, yeah. trying to catch up on some of the talks, and the, yeah. the number of talks and the different topics. It's we got our crowd show, we got our crowd page <coughs> with theCUBE. We're bringing all the data to you. Guys, Lou yeah. and Mark, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. We'll be back right back after this short break. We're live in British Columbia, in Vancouver, for OpenStack Summit. Third day, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, Silicon Angle. We'll be right back after this short break. Cool.